Hi. So we're here today in uh, in amazing Elysian Park uh, in all of its wilderness and uh, old. Uh, you'll see a little bit of this. Uh, some of the relics of past gone uh, days here. We're somewhere in the upper parts of the Police Academy uh, Park and Garden, and uh, and we have today um, our present uh, artists in residence, and this is uh, Florian. Hertz. 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 <laughs> and uh, Florian, why don't you tell uh, our viewers what, uh, what, where your name comes from, what it means? So Florian comes from, it's a Latin name, it comes from, it, it means blooming, flowering, flourishing. It comes from, basically, it's the same uh, word as uh, fauna and flora. It's a bit ironic because I've up until three years ago, I had definitely no green thumb, so it was a bit of a. But they wanted thing. you to flower. Maybe, maybe I hope I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so did they nurture you in 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 any way that you feel like uh, you, you're? My parents did. Uh, <coughs> my mother absolutely did as a from her early childhood on. Like she took me to her art classes. She like I would always sit next to her when she was painting and drawing. I would do something. <clears throat> My father is a sports person. Like he had troubles accepting that his son was not like that in the beginning. Um, now he's one of my biggest fans. Yeah. And he's really he's um, quite. I think he's quite proud. But it took him. It, it was a journey for him to get there. You yeah, know the thing that uh, I will go on to other things, but the most important thing that I wanted to say there is that what makes us think that our parents would be any different than ourselves and it took us time to sort of get comfortable with who we are so of course they can't just immediately accept uh, oftentimes overnight they have to actually digest it absolutely and also there's a different generation there there are expectations sometimes towards children that are realistic or unrealistic but, um, it's the, the outcome, the end, like I'm happy that I can have a conversation with my father and that he's actually open towards what I do. He might not understand it. a lot of the things I, I do, he might not be attracted to in a way, but like he appreciates it, yeah. and respects my way and that I'm actually going my way without much compromises. And I think he has a lot of respect for yeah. that. So that's good. So, um, you heard about the Tom of Finland House, and uh, um, and did you have a? What was the? You came and visited us once before. I came in April for a group show here in LA, where Stuart, um, the resident artist of the Tom of Finland Foundation, was also part of it, and also my friend Matt Lambert. Mm -hmm. And Matt brought me to the foundation at the day of the opening, and he um, introduced me to all of you. I got a first tour of the house, yeah. I saw the grounds, I saw the gardens and um, that day already like in my head was like wow, like I was, I was impressed, I was really really touched and impressed, like I grew up with Tom's work, like I discovered him in a really early age and his work was for me partly highly exciting because it was really sexy but on the other hand also it, it functioned somehow as a role model for me as in there were really happy gay men, in a, like depicted in a really positive way. Yeah. Not, like in the 80s, what was there? Like Elton John, who was not even officially out, um, outed, and Boy George. So that was my only other go-to. So Tom and Robert Maplefold were like the two people that actually showed me gay sexuality, gay men in an art context in a really positive way. So for me, being at the house for the first time was really special. Wow. Seeing also like going through like folders and like seeing like his first ever drawings that I collected like this was a special moment. So when I left like in my head I was like I would love to come back. But there was just a great call. Well things all of the cards fell in place right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean I, I'm very much of the notion that uh, we have to put our thoughts, we have to fantasize, we have to think about what we desire and then it can take form, you know. And I did, like at one point, I actually really verbalized it also to a friend, so, like I would love to go like to LA, like to, would love to spend time at the house. And then I run into you in Berlin, yeah. like at the, at the Tom Finland exhibition at Galerie Judin. Yeah. And um, 
we had a brief talk and then we ran into each other again on the street yeah. in the cafe where yeah. you sat down and we had a longer talk and you invited me. So and that was just for me like, wow. It's a way that you make it the best when it just falls into place. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm, I've never been really pushy in whatever I do, but like I think for me it works best when I lean back and things come naturally. Yeah. So now that you've come and you've been here now two months and one week or so. Yeah, two months, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. It's like my time's running out. And what, well, it's not running out. <laughs> but, but, um, so I know that we actually made a, a very effort, we wanted effort in the sense that we, we wanted to actually make sure that you were knowledgeable about where you could look for stuff in the, in the uh, archives and that. And that still is going on to some degree. But then let's look at how you've been doing with uh, with your uh, your own work and, and whether it's been you know what parts have where have we been actually uh, and I'm not looking for pats here I'm looking for uh, to always keep improving in that um, uh, you're going to have a, a presence a presentation mm -hmm. yeah, before you go and uh, and your work is very uh, uh, it's interesting there are other artists that do maybe similar work in the sense of like going in zone focusing really in because you're very much into detail. I'm really close. Yeah. And, uh, and I broke it a little bit here in LA though. Did like you? I, when I came here I set myself two little tasks. One was like not to use artificial light. Like at home I only shoot with artificial light. So like everything's really planned, it's really controlled. But like coming here it would not make sense. But like, for me it would feel like a waste like not to use like right. all of this. So I only shoot here with daylight, that, is, that already changed a lot, it sounds little, but it does change a lot in, in, the, in the feel um, of the photography. But also for me, like I'm struggling with sound because I can't control it. I'm, I mean, in the end, I'm German, I like to control yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, how have you been with your uh, uh, production, meaning that as far as, you, I see that you have had quite a few uh, models that you've used uh, at, the, at the property and you've yeah. gone off. Is, do you feel like, that part of it's been very easy or for me it's been really really easy like I'm um, generally like I think there's a there's a big part is um, the foundation and the house that makes it really easy for me because like it is a really open atmosphere I don't have the feeling like if I bring someone into the house and I shoot someone naked that I have to yeah and like shyly put them away in a right. corner it's like people walk by no one is leeching over it no one is commenting over it it's like it's it's a regular day it's like that makes it really nice it feels nearly like a studio like a really open studio with many possibilities from the inside to the gardens and um, that is for me perfect I would like to say thank you to Dirk Sharp Mark and Stuart for the incredible experience that I had at the Tom of Finland Foundation. It's been nearly three beautiful, crazy, exciting months where I've been discovering the city, the foundation, parts of Tom's work that I've never seen before and also LA on my bike, what I'm doing right now. I love, <laughs> I really enjoy my time and thank you so much, Tom Finland Foundation for making that happen.